All right, now I have added frames at the end just to give it a little bit of breathing room. Come on. As it sets to reset, right? So here's the very end. Vomits it all back up. It still looked weird. But no, it works. Maybe I need to just go a little faster. <laughs> Can I get away with going from here to here? I think so. This is going to be really fast. So I'm just going to trash that frame. Okay. And then he leaves. And then the setting lasts a little bit longer now before he hoovers it all up and then breathes and this isn't even 10 seconds it's like a few seconds some strange little optical thing that's happening i want to figure out but these are things that can take more time than we need in while i'm demoing this just to get you to the next step But I'm obsessed with him vomiting up that tree. <laughs> Just seems weird. I think it's just because it fills his mouth so much. So let me try a new frame here. Let me try putting that one back in. So his mouth is just always full. And it's because it is empty and then full again. So maybe I can jump from here to here. Yeah, I'll try that. So I'll turn this one off. Yeah, okay. So, leaves, it resets. I'm gonna slow down the timing of these final frames just so it's a little bit slower. I'll start with the first three being at 0.35. These are tiny little shifts, but as they play, they will make a difference. Then going to 0.4. And then I gotta go back to the beginning and ease into it. Start with 0.35. and then start from there. Okay, so one last time. This reminds me so much of a Muppet. I think the way his eyes are just fixed. Okay, so that works. The other thing I might notice is if I zoom in and I look at the corners you see how I have a, a pretty much couple pixel jag there? So just to clean it up before I output it, you might find this is helpful for you. This is just on my stage. I can go to image canvas size and I'm just going to make it um, 7.8 on both sides. This is before it's been reduced to a GIF, before it's been reduced to 256 pixels. So that reduces it, and now if I look at the corners, you know, they're all clean. It just cropped in a tiny bit. It did it for all my frames equally. I don't use the crop tool. I use canvas size. And now it all fits neatly in the frame. And I need to add one more here, like this one.
I can also blend these, which I think I'll do to get new amounts of atmosphere. <laughs> And then it comes back to this. Yeah, okay, that works. So I've got my ending. I've got my transition. I've set it to reset. I've cropped it down. But now I want my finished animation to be 8 inches by 8 inches by 100. So what do I need to do? I go to image, image size, and I'm going to resample it back up to 8 by 8 inches by 100 with those clean edges. Now I am ready to say Command S. And now I can go to export, save for web legacy, keep all the defaults, they work well, whether it's perceptual or selective. You can play it through, you can view it at different sizes, this is at full size, 100%. And all of that kind of blurry edge stuff that we worry about with full composites really just reduces itself to these kind of chunky pixels at this point. All right. Then we say save. I'm going to save it to the desktop. It's going to overwrite my old one, which is fine. It will give me that warning. And there it is. This is the one I'm going to put up to Canvas. And, of course, I can test it on Safari first. But I've tested it enough. Okay, and I'll see it when I put it up into Canvas. Just by right-clicking and opening it in a web browser. What you will no notice when you test it outside of Photoshop is your timing will actually be truer than it is in Photoshop. Because Photoshop you put in like 0.35 seconds, but then Photoshop has just a tiny bit of delay as it's processing, right? Whereas when you save it, and then just play back the script. This is actually a very efficient and refined file. It doesn't take a lot of extra processing. So the timing will appear just slightly faster once you're not playing it within Photoshop. All right, I'm happy with that. If anything, I could have played with the atmosphere more. So to put it into Canvas, very simply, it works, this is a GIF file, it works just like any other online file. So when we say post, the first thing we have to post is our storyboard sketch. Then we post our finished GIF animation. Doesn't mean we can't improve it later, that's why we save our stage file. And it needs to feature a transformation to meet all the requirements of either character or setting or both. Then you're just going to upload an image like you would any still image, but now you put in the GIF. And because within that stack of images, because we saved it as a web legacy with the animation scripts, it now knows how to play those ones in order. I like that little moment where he looks kind of dizzy and then gets sick. And it's only 8 by 8 by 100, so you can actually leave these basically at full size. Because we're actually making this for screen resolution. So there's no reason you need to shrink it within Canvas. Because they look very nice that way. Now, this is what's cool. I save the stage. That stage file I can now open, and this is not 256 pixels. This is millions of colors, right? Millions of options. If I now, this is just a, an option for you, especially those of you who like social media and want to post things, I can now change it from a frame by frame timeline, which is how we animated it, to a video timeline. And this is more like a video editing suite. It's going to be the exact same thing when I play it, as long as I don't mess with these settings. But this stacks all the layers th up this way, kind of like you're editing within iMovie or within a video editing program. Then I go to the window options, and I can then say render video. 
So you're not only able to save these out of Photoshop as GIFs, you can also save them as MP4s. Leave all your defaults, the defaults send it to the downloads, and that will give you an MP4. It's all within the, the timeline window options. So convert to video timeline first and then render video if you want to have an MP4 version. Only do that after you've saved your stage, after you've saved your GIF. Because a GIF is what we need for the class. That's the skill we're learning. But just for your own needs, your own interest, you can do that. It goes to downloads and there it is. I can play it in QuickTime, I can play it in iMovie, and if I want to loop it, I can loop it. I can also slow it down, I can speed it up. Now it's at full resolution. It's because it was still processing. I opened it a little too soon. But this file can't be just like a PSD file. You can't put a video file just in Canvas, right? You'd have to put it to YouTube, then put a link to it. So GIFs work just within the browser architecture. They're just much more efficient. If we look at the size of this, of the video file, that is now 50, 53.9 megabytes, 54 megabytes, compared to the memory usage of the GIF, which is only 16 megabytes. So there's obvious advantages to knowing how to save and use and design GIFs. But we have that. I'll put it into my folder for that assignment. And now we've done everything we can with the stage. I'm not going to save it because I don't want to keep it in the video timeline, but I can also always move it back to, let's see, where is it? Convert. There should be a way to bring it back to the, the timeline, like frame by frame. But I'm not going to worry about that yet because I'd saved it before. So before I close it, though, I'm going to do something else. Well, actually, no, I'm just going to close it. Never mind. And I'm not going to save because I saved it before I rendered the video. Okay. Now I can close my assets, save that, that's done. Now I go to my GIF file, my GIF, right? And I can open that in Photoshop as well. I'm just showing you all these things. Now the problem is these are now at 256 pixels. So when you zoom in, it looks like a mosaic, which is kind of cool. but that is a, an image quality reduction. And it takes up less memory. So for this next step, you can choose to either do this on your GIF, but notice that the GIF has the timeline and you do not want to mess with that. So generally, I leave my GIF alone. Once I output it, it stays that way. But if you needed to, you could edit it within there as well. And I'm going to go back to my stage the one I saved before I moved it to a timeline, a video. And I'm going to open my stage. And now I'm going to clear the timeline in my stage. But before I do that, you see that there's 54 frames. And I only have 19 times 2, 28 layers. Or, so how did I get 54 frames, 38 layers, out of 38 layers? That's because I animated on the timeline a lot. I added frames, I duplicated. So, so what I want to do is now go to my very top layer, which will... I don't want to turn it on, otherwise I'm going to be animating the timeline. I just want to select it. 